Good afternoon. How are you? Do me a favour, turn to the person next to you, look them straight in the eyes and say these words, I really like you. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. In that one instance, we made a connection. That's the great thing about TED. TED makes connections all over the world, sharing ideas that are worth spreading. I'd like to talk to you today about three things, the three Ps that will guarantee your success. How to develop your purpose, how to create your passion, and how to persist in what you're trying to achieve. One thing you all did this morning, which I guarantee you, you took for granted, was this next slide I'm going to show you. In the very instant that you opened your eyes, another day of opportunity was declared well and truly open for you to chase your passion in life, for you to make a difference in your world, in your world, not someone else's world that's on Facebook, not someone else's world that's on the social media platforms, but in your connections with the people that are important to you in your life. And my passion is very much about what I also recommend, this slide should recommend for you, or should, should say to you, and it's this, what you see in life often depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for the reasons why it's tough, you'll find them. If you're looking for the reasons why you may fail, you'll find them. But likewise, if you're looking for the reasons why there is masses of opportunity, why the future looks bright, why there is a light at the end of the tunnel, you'll find those as well. And you'll find all the reasons why you can succeed in whatever it is you set out to choose as your purpose and the major part of what your day or your week or your month will hold for you. As Nikita said, in, 19, in 2011, I set out to put my flag on the map of world endurance by challenging the world record for consecutive marathons. The Guinness World Record for consecutive marathons was 52 marathons in 52 days with no rest. And as I spent 10 months building the programme for how we were going to run a marathon in every city of the UK, a friend sent me an email and said, have you seen this message about this Belgique runner? I said, no, what does it say? He's going to run a marathon a day for a year. So there's always someone doing something a little bit more extreme than we are. But I set out to run ultra-marathons 31 miles a day or 50 kilometres a day, every day, without any day's rest, in each of the official 66 cities of the UK. There were 50 cities in England, 5 in Wales, 5 in Northern Ireland and 6 in Scotland. And we set off on the 16th of March, four years ago. I can't believe it's four years ago already. And on day two, after 66 days of planning and preparation, I tore my Achilles tendon. Not a very clever thing to do when you have 31 miles to run the next day. But if you went to a doctor with a torn Achilles tendon, what would they suggest was a course of treatment for you? Rest it, yes. How long would you rest it for? Until it didn't hurt, yeah. And they say rest it, ice it, compress it, and elevate it. You see, that's conventional wisdom. That's what people tell you, but you don't have to believe what people tell you. Because if I had accepted that advice, my record bid would have been over on day two. A whole year of planning and preparation would have been ended on day two. And I said to the team, guys, tomorrow morning at nine o'clock I'll be standing on the start line, and one way or another we're going to get to the end of that 31 mile day. It wasn't pretty, but seven days on we were still running. It's now massively swollen, it's a level two severe tear, it's very, very painful. I'd taken over 150,000 strides on that ankle alone to get that far. But we were still running. The law of persistence was playing out. The passion I had for achieving the goal was playing out. The passion the team had for helping me, because I didn't do this on my own. I was part of a team. This is what it looked like to the public. This is what it looked like to the journalists that took photographs. Big smiley faces, nice background shot. Sophie, my sports injury therapist, putting about an hour of effort into that injured ankle to make it look like I could run on it that day. In reality, this is what it looked like. Painful, extremely distressing, it took an awful lot of energy to recover from that. But the point is, if your passion for success is strong enough, you can work yourself through the process one day at a time. By day 11, we were still running. We've completed 342 miles, and it's now very close to a rupture. It's massively swollen, it's extremely painful, and the left one is starting to complain also. The tendon is thickening, and there's a lot of pit of edema happening just inside the ankle bone. But all I can tell you is the law of persistence works wonderfully well. And this is what the law of persistence looks like in reality. If this is where you are today, at point A in your life, 
and you have a goal or objective or dream or something you would like to achieve with your purpose, the law of persistence is simply this. If you put one foot in front of the other and just keep your eyes focused on what you're trying to achieve, even if you took baby steps like this, you would still complete 50,000 meters in your day. You would still complete 50,000 strides, you would still get to your finishing line as long as you remain focused on your goal. Not distracted by what's happening here, not distracted by what's happening here, but focused on achieving your objective. And that's the only law that we apply. We just apply the law of persistence. We were diligent in everything we did as far as the medical support was concerned, and I just applied the law of persistence and passion to get me to the finishing line each day. By that stage, I'd taken over 275,000 strides to get that ankle to that point. But you see, there's always someone that's overcoming something more difficult than you. And I was massively inspired by my friend Andy Reid, who came to meet me on day 45, the day of the royal wedding back then. Um, and Andy was a triple amputee, having lost two limbs, two, sorry, three limbs uh, to a landmine explosion in Afghanistan. And he shared some inspiration with me that day. And I take massive inspiration from people in many walks of life. But Andy said to me, Andy, you know, there's one thing I want you to understand. Life is about what you can do, not about what you can't do. And he inspired me by telling me his story, by sharing his story with me. I said, what does it feel like to wake up out of a medically induced coma and realize your whole life has changed? That all your points of reference have been removed? What did you think about? How did you start to formulate a passion for your life when everything has changed? He said, I just made this one decision. I was not going to become a victim of my injuries. I was a survivor. I'd lost some friends in Afghanistan, but I was not going to be a victim. I was going to be a survivor. And instantly, when I opened my eyes in that day, I started to plan. I started to make short-term stepping stone goals of how I was going to get out of that hospital bed. Because that's not where I belong. That's not who I am. And I said, what did that process look like, Andy? He said, well, the nurses said to me, when I can get off the bed, into the wheelchair, off the wheelchair, onto the floor, off the floor, back into the wheelchair, and out of the wheelchair, back into the bed, I can go home to see my girlfriend. Let me ask you a question. How long do you think it would take somebody with that level of injury to be able to achieve that simple stepping stone goal? You tell me. A year? Yeah, six months, eight months? It took Andy two weeks to be able to get himself sat upright in the bed, off the bed onto the wheelchair, off the wheelchair onto the floor, back into the wheelchair, and back into the bed. That's the power of purpose. His desire to go home and see Claire, his girlfriend, was a very powerful purpose. And it drove him through the inconvenience, and it drove him through the pain to be able to achieve his goal. He then learned to walk, something most of us take for granted. But he had to learn to walk from scratch, with an above the knee and a below the knee amputation that's very difficult to balance. But this was Andy's persistence. This is where he started to apply the law of persistence. Because he had another goal. In learning to work with a physiotherapist who was also called Claire, he said, you're going to have to teach me to walk outside. She said, I'm not allowed to do that. We must train you to walk inside. He said, no, because when I propose to my girlfriend, it won't be inside. It's going to be outside. And I need to be able to walk on unstable platforms, unstable pavements, go up and down stairs, and get down onto one knee and propose like I want to. And so Claire worked with him to achieve that goal. His other stepping stone goal was to stand on the parade ground as a soldier and receive his campaign medal, along with his colleagues who'd come back from Afghanistan, not as an injured soldier in a wheelchair, but standing proud, standing with purpose, and standing because he'd been persistent in getting to that short-term stepping stone goal. And then he surprised everybody by doing something no one thought he could do. He chose to walk off the parade ground as a soldier and not be wheeled off in a wheelchair as a victim of his injuries. Massive inspiration, hugely inspirational when it comes to thinking about the challenges that we face on a daily basis. But you see, Andy latched on to the importance of his purpose. He made that purpose crystal clear in his mind. And he focused on it every single day. Passion is born the instant you catch sight of your potential. Andy's potential was always to be able to be in a position where he walked off the parade ground at the end of that presentation and get down on one knee and get engaged to his fiancée, Claire. They subsequently married and they have a little boy who's two years old. But he still has amazing passion and amazing persistence for the things that he can do in his life, even though he has had tremendous adversity to overcome. Ladies and gentlemen, we can all do the same. We just need to find our passion, we just need to develop our purpose, and we need to learn to apply the law of persistence, and we can do exactly the same.
I suppose, guys, once we get down on one knee and we pop that question, the next thing that comes is passion, isn't it? Well, Andy helped me to understand that this was a different kind of passion he was working with. This is a passion that you and I can all develop also. Every single one of us in the audience can learn to develop this kind of passion that will help us to achieve our goals in life. Whatever those goals may be, the amount of learning you need to put into your studies, the amount of effort you need to put into your work, the amount of hours you need to invest in your project or your, your new business development plans, the amount of information you need to assimilate and to be able to take on board to do that, we can all develop a passion for those things we want to achieve. And I'd like to share the definition of passion that I like to use. Passion is nothing more than this. Passion is a tough, optimistic enthusiasm that overcomes negativity and inconvenience and empowers you to succeed. You can develop that passion. You absolutely can succeed in your goals. You just need to have a clear focus on your purpose. What's your purpose? What is it you're trying to do? Purpose isn't what you do. Purpose is the reason you do what you do. What is it that drives you? What's your internal excitement? Where do you get your feedback and your inspiration? That's your passion, and you can all develop that. I get invited to lots of charity events, I get invited to lots of presentation events. And uh, a little while ago I was invited by Karen Brady uh, to London to an awards dinner uh, with a host of other celebrities to be able to present an award at a very, very special event. My job was to um, act as a bridge, a bridge between a live video feed coming in from Los Angeles from Sharon Stone, the Hollywood actress, who um, was talking very passionately about her passion and her purpose to recover from a stroke because my job was to provide the award to Rachel um, who was a lovely lady and uh, 10 days after having given birth to her second child, her son, she was sat at the table and turned her head to the right to acknowledge somebody and there was a crack in the back of her neck. She felt this cracking noise and all of a sudden a swooping headache developed over her head and she was having a stroke. She was living through a stroke 10 days after having given birth to her baby boy. And she shared the story with me over lunch when we were sat there. I could see the emotion in her eyes. I could see the pain as she relived the memory of what that felt like and the fear that was inside her. But very quickly she was picked up by the medical association. The, 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 the ambulance rushed her to hospital. She was diagnosed as fast positive. And then the process kicked in where other people who are passionate other people who have a passion and a purpose and apply persistence kicked in to support her and to help her to recover from that stroke. And she explained to me the fear that she felt sitting there, simply not knowing what if it happens again, because she also suffered secondary bleeding in her, in her brain. But I spoke with Rachel yesterday, and uh, we gave her the award for fundraiser of the year, and I was asking her how she was getting on now. And life is just full of passion for her. She succeeded in becoming that mum. She succeeded in overcoming the symptoms of the stroke. She succeeded in learning to sit up. Something that the stroke took away from her, affected her vision, it affected her balance, it affected her ability to function like you and I do, and we all take it for granted. Just like opening our eyes this morning and a whole day of opportunity ahead of us. Well, let me ask you a question. If tomorrow morning you didn't open your eyes, it would be a different situation, wouldn't it? So when Rachel opens her eyes, she has a completely different focus, a different passion. And in those days, it was simply, how can I become the mum that I want to be? How can I go back to being a mum? Because that's who I am. She was also a very successful director in a PR company, a very busy professional lady, as well as a mum, and as well as a new mum when that injury happened. But we can succeed. And she took one step at a time. First of all, it was to walk 500 yards. Then it was to walk a little bit further, and then we'd be able to walk back again. And then she started deciding, I'm going to fundraise. Then it was to walk a mile. Massive endurance for her at that stage. Then it was to walk a little bit further, and to raise some more money. And she successfully raised over £17,000, and many, many more legacy events have happened since then, for the Stroke Association to help people overcome those challenges when they happen. I was proud to give her the award. She was a fantastic recipient and amazing anecdotal information and praise coming from Sharon Stone, especially for that special lady, Rachel. Spoke to her yesterday, and uh, she sent her best wishes to you all, and I told her we were talking about purpose today, and about persistence, and about passion, and she just wanted you to know that, you know, life is about what you can do. You absolutely can overcome, you absolutely can succeed, 
and you can cope with everything, but it's always one day at a time. I spend a lot of time visiting hospitals as well. It's one of the things I love to do to inspire people. One very special lady I met was Helen. Helen was um, 80 years old, had never been ill for a day in her life, had never been in hospital when she found out that she had cancer, a very aggressive cancer, and had to go through major surgery at the age of 79 years old. And we talked about life, we talked about how she was going to rebuild her life. We talked about her dreams over things like a cup of coffee and talked about the things that were important to her at that stage of her life. Because you see, Helen's my mum. And it's very, very important that I understand how, in, how important inspiration is. Because I saw her go through the heights of depression. I saw her feel angry at her illness. I saw her feel lonely because she was at home on her own. And I lived 250 miles away. And it was really important for me as, as, a, as an inspirational speaker, my passion, or my purpose, if I share that with you, is to be a permanent source of inspiration and a valued source of trust and inspiration to those who are seeking it in times of change. And my mum was going through a time of change, learning to cope with something she'd never experienced before. She succeeded in overcoming the operation. Um, on the 5th of January, she entered into chemotherapy. And for every, three, every third Monday, she goes through a very aggressive bout of the chemotherapy in hospital all day. But she's maintained a positive outlook. She has dreams and goals and ambitions for the future that she couldn't see when she was first diagnosed because it was all about fear and it was all about worry. But here she is having her chemo with a big smile on her face and chatting to everyone that she can come across and telling them to have a great day and to be excited about their future because that's what she sees for herself. I told her I was coming to speak to you today and she asked me what I was going to talk about and I told, I told her I'm going to talk about you. <laughs> and she laughed. And I said, what would you say to the audience, Mum? If you were going to share something with them, what would you share with them? And she said, just remain positive. Just keep your thumbs up. Keep looking on the bright side of life because you can do anything that you want to do if you do that. It's about your purpose for life. It's about developing your passion and it's about developing persistence. I said that life is about what you see, isn't it? Life is about what you see for yourself. If you see positivity, if you see potential, you'll find it. Don't look for the negatives, guys. But sometimes, let's be honest, it is tough out there. Sometimes there is no light at the end of the tunnel. I'd like to take one thing away from this presentation today, ladies and gentlemen. There's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you.